this video, we're going to discuss the ES6 keyword let. Now let allows us to define variables in ES6. It's similar to var, but it has a few differences. In fact, let removes the problems that come with var when it comes to scope. Scope is the area of a program in which you can access a variable or where it's legal to use the variable. Now, var has a global and function scope, which I'm going to show you now. So I've got an index.html set up here and I've got the Babel transformer included. I don't have the React libraries because I don't need them for this particular lecture. Let's first have a look at global scope in JavaScript. I'm going to write a function called log a, which is simply going to log a variable called a, which I'm going to define outside of the function itself. I'm going to set this variable to be 10. Now with global scope, this variable a is going to be available everywhere in this script, as we're going to see in a second. So in the function log a, we are going to log the variable a. Let's call that function. And of course, that function is just going to log a. But outside of the function as well, just to demonstrate how global scope works, I'm also going to log the variable a. Save this document and head on over to the browser and check it out. Open up developer tools, head over to the console and we will see that 10 has been logged twice. Now this is because the variable a is in the global scope. So it's available anywhere within our program. It's available to the log a function here just going to put my semicolon on the end there and it's also available outside of the function as well so this is global scope it's available anywhere in the script let's have a look at function scope now I'm simply going to declare a function called log b now which is simply going to log the variable b so let's define that variable b and let's set it to 100 and console.log that variable and let's call the log b function. Now function scope simply means that if you define a variable within inside a function and only within a side of function it's only going to be accessible within that function. So we won't be able to access the variable b outside of this function. So if we console.log the variable b, we're going to get a reference error that b is not defined because as far as the compiler is concerned, the variable b is not defined in this current scope, which is the global scope. It's only defined within the function here. So only this function has access to the variable B. So it's gonna get logged out here, but it's not gonna get logged out here. Let's check that out. I'm just gonna comment these out as well, actually, just to make it clearer. And there we go. So we get the 100, which is inside the function, and we get a reference error that B is not defined because it is outside of the function. So this is function scope and this is global scope. And this is all that var has in JavaScript. A lot of languages have block scope, which is really useful and it kind of makes a lot more sense as well. So let's have a look at how block scope doesn't work in JavaScript. So lack of block scope. 
I'm going to define a variable called C and I'll set it to 99. I'm then just going to do a simple if statement. So if true, so this is always going to run. I will set the variable C to 100 now. And I will console.log C. And outside of this, I'm going to console.log C again. I'm just going to comment out the function scope example. So looking at this example here, this if statement, what would you expect this log statement to output and this log statement to output? Let's check it out. So they've both output 100. Was that what you expected? If you're familiar with another language that has block scope, probably not. Now, the reason both of these log statements output 100 is because we don't have block scope. So first we define the variable C here, and it's 99 at this point. We then go into our if statement, because if because the bool is true, and we change the variable C to be 100. So now this variable outside here is now also 100. So we console.log C, which is 100, and we console.log C, which is 100. Because JavaScript doesn't have block scope, the problem that we run into in this example here is called hoisting, which can sometimes be a positive thing, but in this case, it, it's not. So obviously we define the variable C outside of the if block. So what we're essentially doing is creating the variable C. So we could actually set it to undefined here. And what this means is that the variable C is always available in the global scope because this variable is hoisted up. So if we actually commented this out, we'd get the same result, 100, 100. And that is because the compiler quickly runs through the code when it start, first runs, gets all the variables, and any that aren't in a function scope are declared on the global scope. So it essentially creates an undefined variable, variable C on the global scope that is now available anywhere within our program. And this is a problem. What we want is to be able to have block scope. So we should be able to define a variable here and only have it accessible within the if block. And we can't do that with the var keyword, but we can do that with the let keyword. So let's do an example with the let keyword. I'm actually gonna copy the example above and change the variable C to D and comment out, I'll delete that line there and change the keyword var to let. Let's comment out the example C. Now because D is using the keyword let which has block scope, this console.log is going to work but this one isn't. So let means that the scope of the variable D, because it is still a variable, is contained within the block. So it's only available between these two curly braces. It's not available here. It's not hoisted out. So we don't have, you know, let D equals undefined. That doesn't happen. It's simply contained within the block here. So let's save this and have a look. So we're kind of, we expect this to be 100 and we expect this to be undefined. And there we go. Reference error, D is not defined. And that is because the keyword let gives us block scope, which is something that JavaScript was missing. 
and it's really useful really really useful if you're not aware about scope in javascript you might not know that if you define something in a higher level of scope it becomes available in a lower level of scope so in our let example here obviously this console.log down here doesn't work because d doesn't exist it's not in that scope it's in the ifs block scope if we were to create a new if statement with inside the block the d variable is still going to be available so with console.log d this example is still going to work here because variables are always available lower down in the scope chain. Let's have a quick look at that one there. And there we go, two 100s. So variables are not available above in the scope chain. So outside of the scope, it's not available, but it is available lower down in the scope. To conclude, you should use the let keyword over the var keyword as this will avoid confusing behavior that can happen when var is used. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like, share and subscribe. If you've got any comments, suggestions or ideas for videos, leave them in the comments below, send me a tweet at codewithtim or send me an email codewithtim at gmail.com